All right, today we're going to reassemble this uh, old uh, Remington graded gun. We have uh, sent it out and um, it lost a lot of engraving uh, when uh, after we got through polishing the gun because it was so deeply pitted and our engraver has replaced uh, all the engraving that was removed on it. So now we are ready to assemble it, and it kind of goes together basically about like an auto five, not a whole lot of difference. Let's do the let's do the trigger plate assembly here. Now this has a uh, the old early style push pull. Go down just a little bit with it. There you go. Yeah, push pull safety, suicide safety as we call them, uh, and it goes in. The detent actually is uh, these uh, ears on the safety and there's some notches in the uh, uh, trigger plate here that give it the detent. So we push it down in place and uh, slide it back where it belongs. And uh, we have niter blued this uh, safety and the trigger and the screws uh, to try to make the gun look original. And I believe this gun is sold and it was kind of part of the request too. So there's our our so-called suicide safety in place. Now here's our niter blued uh, trigger. Nice, pretty niter blued. We're gonna assemble that. This, this kind of goes together basically like, like an Auto 5, not a whole lot of difference. Uh, very simple to uh, put together. There's that, the um, trigger uh, return spring we left in and blew it in place. It didn't want to come out. It's not a big deal. It just, I just couldn't get it to drive out. So it doesn't hurt to blew it in place. Uh, I'm going to tap it back into place where it belongs. And there, there's our trigger return spring. The main spring is next. This is an old early high grade gun. I noticed they even polished the main spring. I thought that was, my theory is always uh, you know, why do you do that when nobody really sees it? And somebody said, told me once, well, you don't see the interior of a fine Swiss watch either. Uh, well, I guess I never looked at it that way. Now I'm trying to find a screw that's missing here. It probably disappeared in the niter blue process. And I don't see it, so now we gotta stop. Oh no, here it is, here it is. This, um, this is the uh, mainspring screw. It goes in just like just like an Auto 5. It's a little different. It's got a little more of a, a, a taper to it. So it doesn't look the same, but it does the same thing. And that niter blue is going to give us a nice contrast uh, against the uh, the black, the uh, blued parts. So um, let's get it in here without burring any screws. Screws that have been burred are So our main spring screw is going in. No burrs, we don't want any burrs. Can't live with that. So, snug it down. There's our main spring screw in place. All right, hammer is next. There are two different pins in this gun. They look the same. One is, one is designed for one thing and one is designed for something else. This is the hammer. Let's double check. There should be an interruption on the cocking, uh, on the um, locking block latch. And uh, I don't see that, but I will put one on it. It should have that. So anyway, let's go ahead and put our hammer in place here. There it is. Cock it, all right. Safety sear is next. All right. 
Uh, and this is going to complete our trigger plate assembly. So there it is. The um, safety series in place. The trigger plate is now assembled and ready to go. Nice contrast uh, with the nighter blue against the black. That just really looks great. Okay, let's do the receiver. All right, let's put our cartridge stop in first. It kind of goes in along the line of a uh, of a uh, auto five. My uh, uh, carrier latch button and uh, all. Now, these uh, early guns had a uh, a lock screw in the uh, uh, magazine. The locks the magazine in place. Brownings don't have that, they just put them in real tight and they don't have to worry about that. But this does have a magazine uh, lock screw. And uh, I think this, this one's going in kind of hard, which tells me that somewhere along the line, um, that magazine probably rotated some. So I'll go back later and look at that because I'm gonna have to loosen up the magazine, kind of move it around or just re-drill it, probably what I'll do. We'll take care of that later. Um, all right, our breech bolt goes in just like an auto five, really no difference. And uh, I noticed the, uh, I hadn't noticed this till just today when I was polishing these parts, even the back of the uh, operating handles engraved, kind of, kind of tricked it out. I didn't notice that till just now. Here's something else I'll talk about right now when I'm talking about an engraving. Uh, here's the original cap. And uh, it's engraved out on the end. Well, the issue with this cap is, as always, like I swear 80%, 90% of the guns I get in, somebody's had channel locks on this thing. And they just ruin this cap. Look at that. Why do they do that? It's just totally unnecessary. So they just ruin that cap completely. Well, I found another cap. It fits the gun just fine. It looks, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks the same. It's got a three ring, but it still is an old, it's fine. Now I'm gonna have to send this cap out and get it engraved to match this, because uh, we, we don't want to cut any corners on this gun, but why in the world do you guys have to put those channel locks, vice grips on those caps? It's totally unnecessary. We've talked about this before. Do not do that. All right, we're gonna put our, uh, well, wait a minute. Yes, let's put our uh, locking block latch in. It goes in just, well, let's see, it probably goes in a little different from an Auto 5. Here's, no, here's something a little different on these. The Browning Auto 5, they don't, they have a hole in their receiver. It's not that big of a hole. They got this big, gigantic hole in these receivers. Uh, it's not necessary to do that. Uh, Browning made theirs look a little trimmer and a little slimmer by uh, putting just a small hole on the other side. I'm going to, uh, I got a, I have a pin here, the uh, locking block latch pin, but I think someone's traded it out and probably used one out of a trigger. What I'm going to do is step over here and kind of paint some flats on this pin. Because you want this pin to be tight. You don't want it slipping out or It'll come out on you and cause a lot of grief. So let's, uh, I've, inter I've painted it a little bit, give, put some interruption on it to make it go in a little tighter. Now let's go ahead and see if we can. All right, it's going in. You see how tight it fits. Mm, no, I'm still not tight enough. I, yeah, you gotta, you don't want that pen working out on you. So I will step back. And I will uh, paint it a little more to uh, interrupt it and make it go in tighter. Okay, let's try that. This pin needs to be pretty tight pretty snug because they will work out when they do they uh, do a job on your receiver they'll mess it up and 
to jam the gun up, so. That's a little better. All right, now we're ready for our ashen spring. Like I say, no real difference between this gun and an Auto 5 in the way that it works, it functions. Uh, that's, uh, that spring feels pretty good. It's got a lot of tension on it. That's the way you want it. It's an old wooden plug. Uh, it's not rotten. It's not bad. So we're just going to reuse it. Make sure everything's clean and clear. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. All right. Carrier's next. Um, carrier screws on these guns have no lock screws on. So you need to put them in, snug them down tight. Brownings, of course, have a lock screw, so they can't work out. These, I've never seen them come out. You just you put them in tight and snug them down. The fact that they don't have a lock screw doesn't seem really to matter too much. They, they don't come out. Now, these carrier screws have been nighter blue, and they look really good. Snug it down. You can put them in either way. Um, Brownings, you gotta kinda get the right one on the right side because it'll have a cutout for the lock screw. These don't, so you can swap these around. They, there is no wrong way on these. I snug them down tight. All right, gotta step back here, grab my oil. Always, I treat these just like I do an Auto 5. Put a drop or two of oil on the action spring on the uh, uh, surface where the uh, carrier spring comes in contact with the carrier and a little bit on the uh, carrier dog here spring. And then this has the early carrier spring that goes in the side of the receiver, like so. Carrier springs in. Carrier works, make sure push the carrier all the way down, it should come back on its own. If your spring is short, that carrier will hang it won't work but this one's fine okay same thing on this you should always put a drop of oil on the uh, uh, safety sear i put a little bit on the the uh, roller on the hammer all right this goes in like a brownie we'll go in at the rear and then swing up the front all right here's our front trigger plate screw pull the bolt back a little bit and then the trigger plate will jump up where it belongs and put in your new uh, put in your uh, trigger plate screw your rear one I've got two of them in here for some reason this I think now this was the original one I didn't like it because it was uh, uh, the slot was too wide on so I put a new screw in it with a, a more narrow slot and I took that that was right out of a Browning Auto 5, and that screw in the trigger plate was the same. Worked just fine. I just didn't like the wide slot end that had been boogered up. Okay. Yep, comes through just about right there. All right, here's our, our front trigger plate screw. And this has a lock screw on it. So this I take it back. That ain't not that's not even a screw, it's a pin. It just pushed in. Like so. Now we're gonna go ahead and assemble this gun, but I'm going to send this uh front trigger plate screw back to my nitrider, night my guys doing the niter bluing. See the screws here, the night they've been nicely niter blued, they're kind of that purplish iridescent uh blue color. The uh, see that uh, there's the other side of the uh, front trigger plate pin. It's too, it's just not the color I like. It's a straw color, which works fine on certain guns, but they're all they're about the right color. That one's a little too light. We're gonna put that back in later, but that's minor stuff. We'll, we'll go ahead in the meantime here and uh, assemble this gun completely. Uh, get our uh, magazine spring in. This had a interesting plug here. I was looking at it. I thought, well, that's an aftermarket thing. No, I got looking at it and it says, Remington 12 gauge 2. Uh, I thought that was kind of odd. So apparently that's the original. I don't know why they would put a plug like that in. Uh, they would take up the, you know, space from the uh, magazine spring, but that's apparently factory. 
So uh, it's going to be kind of a chore to get it in there. Here, here's a way to kind of get these in. Take a screwdriver and put it down through that. And just push it right down in. Then hold it. And then put your plug. Put your plug in. This is odd. I don't really like that plug. Like this is what it is. I'm gonna have to turn the spring over even. Because it's uh it's not going in properly. Let me try. Let's try it this way. Put our follower in. Let's try it again. The magazine spring. There again to get it in there, just uh Take a screwdriver and put it right in the end of it and push it all down in there. It won't jump out on you. All right, I think it's converted. Okay, that feels better. All right, let's see if we can get our three shot plug or adapter in place here. Yeah, it's going in now. Okay, that's the way it goes. And here's our three shot retainer. Roll those in just like you would on an Auto 5. Tap them in. This is a whole different ball game here. I, don't, I really don't like their, the way they do these things, but that's what it is. All right, roll it in. A lot of tension on that spring. I'm going to put the cap on carefully in a little bit just to make sure it doesn't jump out of it. This has the original early square spring. Browning recommends replacing those because the square corners on had a tendency to dig into the magazine tube. But I'm trying to keep this gun original so I'm just going to put the old square spring back on and uh, the uh, same thing on this just like I would an auto 5 though. This, uh, this is too tight. I'm going to open it up a little bit. That'll cause them to malfunction when they're too tight. Um, so I put my spreader in here, open it up a little bit, because I don't want it to go on that tight, but I would, I'm would. i still putting it on just like a Browning Auto 5 with the, the bevel up. And uh, that feels pretty good. And a dropper to a motor oil. Another spring, okay. So I'm gonna, Put, here's our new cap we talked about. It hasn't been engraved yet, but we're going to engrave it. We're going to pull out uh, uh, this front uh, trigger plate screw, and we're going to uh, anite or blue it. Then we'll grab the wood up and uh, put the wood on it. And we'll be finished up and ready We've, to go. Uh, well, I just uh, mounted the stock up on this uh, Model 11. I'm looking at it here. I got a real nice fit down here. The chips are all gone. Uh, the uh, chip in the butt. Uh, end of the toe of the stock's been repaired and a new uh, uh, butt plate's been installed. We'll take some still pictures. You can see them better. Checkering's been all recut nicely. Uh, form checkering. Remember how beat up that form was? Oh, look at that. Checkering's been all sharpened up. And uh, I have mounted the stock on again. I want to talk a little bit. I did replace several bad screws. Uh, here's an original screw with a real wide slot in it. looked horrible. I couldn't live with that. And a trigger plate screw, real wide slots in them uh, from heavy mechanic screwdrivers. I replaced him, uh, and the interesting thing was the Browning screw fit right in there. Uh, we re-nitered uh, one of these front screws, or the rear screw that was a little light. Uh, so uh, we uh, are now ready to just go ahead and put our barrel on, and uh, I'll slip the form on like so. I'll go ahead and put the uh, Oh, I'll put the new cap on it that hasn't been engraved yet. We'll we'll engrave that this week, and that'll finish that up. And uh, but it's going to hold everything in place here. And we'll shoot the gun to make sure it functions and all. But uh, there it is, assembled. Uh, looks really good. Looks good. Got the uh, the chips taken care of in the stock. Got a nice. Uh, I tightened the stock to the receivers, drawn up nice and tight. Uh, the niter niter blue screws look fantastic. The uh, lost engravings all been replaced, and the old gun looks just really looks very very nice. I'm really proud of it. So.